Next up, why lack of leverage keep Bitcoin and stocks climbing despite the sell-off? So this is a big question that, that comes about because we've seen massive growth in the S&P 500, the traditional market, NASDAQ, and everything else because it's a bubble. Let's just call a spade a spade. It's a bubble. The Fed is in there and they are propping everything up. So the question then becomes, well, what happens when the Fed goes, hey, sorry, we can't print any more money. We just ran out of ink. They won't say that. But I mean, at some point, they're going to actually stop uh, quantitative easing. So what's going to happen to stocks? Well, it's going to pop. And then we're going to see a lot of people going, hey, what do we do now? I believe that the traditional market players that are in cryptocurrency right now, there will be a, a slight sell-off. But the strong hands, like you and me right now, we're going to reap the benefits massively. And I've always said this, what is going to propel the cryptocurrency digital asset space is uncertainty. And when we've got things like the presidential election, this coronavirus come breathing down our neck and a lack of a vaccine, what we're going to see is when this bubble pops, I'm like, what? wait, where do we put our money? What do we do? Well, we'll take it out of the stock market and guess what we could do? Maybe put it into, I don't know, uh, gold, silver, and this thing called Bitcoin, which is digital gold. And what's all the other cryptocurrencies? Oh, they're all going up. What's this DeFi thing? Maybe that's a big thing to get into. Getting ahead of myself. Sorry. This is what the article states. The sell-off taking pause may only be emboldening bulls and further encouraging them to buy the dip with confidence. And until more leverage is added to the market, analysts say more upside is likely before the bubble bursts. And sure, we're going to see uh, more increase in the traditional market before it actually just blows out. But this is what's interesting. The sell-off, which just recently happened, S&P took a dip, in the six top tech stocks combined was equal to or greater than five Bitcoin networks and market caps worth of value. Can you imagine that? 200 something billion or 160, whatever, 180 billion or something like that. Uh, five times, five X of what that is. And there's just these tech companies. I mean, not just the tech companies, but I mean, Facebook, really? Come on, come on. And you have the ongoing correlation between crypto and the stock market had previously kept the asset classes climbing side by side. When sentiment turned recently, both classes fell again together. And according to Andrea Cicioni, Head of strategy at investment research firm T.S. Lombard points to this chart right here. Now we can see that it does look incredibly similar. Let's just be honest, right? Bitcoin here, NASDAQ there, climbing, dipping, diving, dodge, dick, dip, duck, dodge, and dive. But here's the whole crux of it, uncoupling. So Cicioni claims that unlike other peaks in price, there's a distinct lack of leverage in the market that has prevented a trigger in more downside. He states, after such a severe drop, weak hands have already been shaken out and now with support holding both Bitcoin and stock market bulls, maybe we're gaining both their footing and confidence for another push higher. Further growth in the stock market could, as CCONI warns, could reflate the tech stock bubble and keep valuations climbing, but that doesn't change the fact that there's still a bubble and it's going to blow up. And lastly, what could separate the two classes once and for all? Confirming a $10,000 as support, this is for Bitcoin, and a triangle breakout could cause serious FOMO in crypto beyond what's going on in stocks. The allure of prices soaring while stocks potentially start to stagnate or suffer could further fuel Bitcoin's rise from the inflow of stock capital. So here's what's going on. You can see, and we just took a look at that recently, when we took a look at uh, CoinMarketCap, or not, excuse me, CoinGecko, and it's just... it. If it has gone below 10,000, it's been for a very short amount of time, 99.80, 99.62 uh, or somewhere in there, but it's always hit that 10,000 and bounce right back up. If they can keep that level, it will signal to all the different investors out there like, look, here is our bottom line, 10,000, and we can only go up or oh, we can only go up from here. Our all-time high was almost 20,000. This just happened three years ago. We already had our halving. We've laid a lot of track. There's a lot of new innovation in the space. We are ready for prime time. And we've got a lot of institutional players who have come into the space and go, we want Bitcoin. So again, I'm just going to reiterate what I said in the beginning. What will push the crypto market to higher highs is uncertainty and speculation. And with the presidential election coming up, no vaccine, and we got a plunging GDP for all not just America, but for nations across the globe, we're going to see a lot of uncertainty. And what that's going to do is push people into cryptocurrency digital assets as a safe haven. Let's move on. Thank you.